Well, today the Australian energy market operator AMO said it will lift its suspension of the national electricity market from early tomorrow morning. The test will be whether generators will enter the market and whether prices do abate. Let's hear from the chief executive today of AMO, Daniel Westerman. Now I've said that we will not keep this market suspended for a minute longer than is needed. And today I can confirm that we are activating a staged approach to lift the suspension of the national electricity market. The first step will take place at the end of trading day today, and that is 4am tomorrow morning, when we'll allow the market to set the price again. The second step will happen 24 hours after that, when we will be able to formally lift the market suspension. Now, Westerman wants to see three things with the lifting of this suspension. First, that the system used to schedule generation will work without fail. Second, that AMO expects to increase the number of directions it gives to generators, in effect, to create more electricity. And third, there's an expectation of a reduction in forecast shortfalls of energy or low reserves. So let's bring in here energy economist Bruce Mountain, director of the Victorian Energy Policy Centre. Uh, Bruce, many thanks for your time. Is that enough? Is it going to work, do you think? Um, well, we certainly hope that the last few days of market closure has allowed for things to normalise a bit and for there to be some confidence that generators can supply. Um, I think uh, there have been some moves to bring on more coal supply to some of the uh, power generators which are in jeopardy. Uh, so I think that will make things a little bit more stable. And evidently, I think there's some confidence that uh, the power system will now be able to clear the, and uh, at least there's a prospect that the prices are going to have some meaning. Okay, so can Australia in the future be an affordable energy country, a country with plenty of electricity, given the fact that it seems to be a gap out until about 2028, 2029, when you've got some large-scale wind projects come on? But what you've highlighted in a recent report also is a fundamental shortfall in the amount of storage capacity that we have. In other words, batteries. That's something you say that the nation's got to get cracking on. Yes, I think the big energy challenge that we face um, in the short, medium and long term is bringing on electrical storage. Um, all the studies from EMO and others show uh, building storage capacity to take the surpluses from wind and solar and put them in storage devices, which could be chemical batteries or pumped hydro or hydro or gravity and so on, putting them in those when there's a surplus and getting it out when there's a shortfall is what we need to ensure we have a clean energy supply and that takes advantage of the fantastic advantage that we have in wind and solar production costs. So that's the big issue. Uh, EMO studies show that's where the vast majority of our uh, dollars, or not the vast majority, but far more goes into that than goes into transmission. We obviously need very great investment in wind and solar too. Uh, but bringing on that storage capability is the critical thing uh, and it's going to need policy support and I think that's where the priority action ought to be. But from an economics point of view, is the reality that we can't, until we have that storage, really cut our dependence on fossil fuels, in other words, gas and coal, mainly because if you don't have that storage capacity, you have the potential for these significant disruptions to energy and the spike in these wholesale prices via the national energy market? Yes, I think that's quite right. You can't close coal. Uh, you can close some of the gas, but I don't think there's any purpose in that. You can't close the coal until such time as you've built the replacement. And that replacement is a great deal more wind and solar capacity because the, uh, the, the wind and solar plant only works when the wind and sun is available, so you need more capacity and storage. And only once you've built both of those is there a prospect of closing the coal and keeping the power system stable and prices at a reasonable level. So um, a policy to bring on that new capacity is where I think all the government action should be. 
There is a transmission job to be done. The states are focused on that, and the Commonwealth can help in some measure, but it's not our biggest job. Our biggest job by far is storage, and the big missing link that we have is a storage policy. We do not have a storage policy yet. So uh, we've put forward ideas on how that storage policy might work, um, and uh, we, we, we think with a suitable policy that we can see the massive expansion in this that we need, uh, and then take advantage of our excellent resources. Okay, so one of the issues that I sort of understand is a part of the problem that's been there today, the shortfall in electricity, is a shortfall in gas, which is partly because no gas was reserved, uh, in particular when the Gladstone terminals were being built. Is there a point right now, given your issue about storage, battery storage in, in particular, that Australia should be reserving lithium and other battery materials for our own use before exporting overseas? Seas, given the fact that we have right now the biggest production of lithium in the world? Yes, that's a very interesting point, uh, Ross. Um, there's a fair gap between spodumene, which is a processed lithium um, form, and battery production, whereas with gas, there's a much smaller link between gas extraction and gas use. So I think we ought to be thinking very carefully about rare earths, we should be thinking about lithium, but we need to actually add value to it and turn it into a useful device. We aren't there yet. Um, so, uh, but I think having that, that long-term um, strategic thinking on access to our, our key input resources is very valuable. I think we've made a mistake with gas. I think it's very difficult to retrace that mistake in terms of our uh, access to it for our, our, our own use. Um, and it would be good to see if we didn't make that same mistake with the uh, energy minerals and rare earths of the future. Yeah, I'll tell you what, good to have you on the program, Bruce. Bruce Mountain is the director of the Victorian Energy Policy Centre. And many thanks for your time today.